hi guys welcome back to the channel today in this video i'll be sharing with you guys how i use this fabric here to make this beautiful shirt i'm putting on so if you're interested in learning how to make your very own shirt please keep on watching and let's get started with the video these materials here are what i'm going to be using to uh, make this pattern i'll be drafting the pattern on a pattern paper because the fabric i have here is silk and it is very light so it's best to draft on a pattern paper So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is mark two and a half inches away from the center of your pattern paper like you see me doing like this and with that that two and a half inches you're just going to make a straight line all the way to the end of your paper this is going to be the allowance for our button in front of the shirt so after doing that as you can see i'm just making a straight line also at the top to serve as our shoulder line Please don't forget to leave some space at the front at least two and a half inches just like you see that I did here. So like I said before this is the shoulder line I'm just going to label it the SL and from this line here we're going to start taking all our measurements. So placing your tape on the line you're going to go down to your bust point for me it's 10 inches go down to my waistline which is 15 inches and then the full length of this top is 24 which is just the length i have on this pattern paper so i'm just going ahead to draw lines across next is on this shoulder line i'm going to go ahead and divide my shoulder measurement by two and i'm going to mark it right here so that is 14 divided by 2 is 7 so when you're through with that the next thing you want to do is how wide you want your neckline to be so i'm going in by 3 inches on that side and then coming down by 3 inches as well so i'm just going to go ahead now to um make a curve for my neckline next thing is on this point here that we'll go for the shoulder we're going to come down by one inch and when you've done that you're just going to connect that one inch point into the neckline to get your shoulder slope now the next thing you want to do is to get our armhole depth an easy way you can do that is to divide your bust measurement by six and add 1.5 to that that will determine how deep your armhole will be or alternatively like i'm doing like this you can go up from the bust point by two inches so when you go up from the bust point by two inches you're just going to mark it and connect that line to meet the armhole like this and then you're just going to go straight into the side like this as well so this new line that i just created on the side is our chest line so you're going to now divide the measurement you have on the armhole line here into two and from that point there you will go in by half of an inch and then when you're through with that on this chest line here you're going to have to divide your bust measurement by four and mark it also on the bust line you're going to do the same thing divide your bust measurement by four and make a mark there do the same thing on the waistline waist measurement divided by four and also on the end of the top you're going to divide your hip measurement by four and mark it there when you're through with that you add one inch all the way around to serve as your stitching allowance and then join all the last points together so now for the armhole you're going to join this point this point and this point together with your curve through remember that this point is our bust measurement divided by four here so we're going to join this this and this with our curve through to get the armhole if you've been watching all my tutorials this is something that i do all the time drafting out a basic bodies you should definitely be used to seeing me doing all of this so this is basically all for the front pattern so as you can see i'm folding in the allowance for my button in front just like you see here before we go ahead and cut this out so guys when you've cut it out and bring back your allowance in front this is what the neck area is going to look like so if it looks like this you know you are definitely on the right track now for you to get a comb down in front of your shirt i'm going to explain that better later on the front of your pattern paper here like this from the shoulder you're going to come down by one inch and just make a straight line across a one inch like this and you're just going to go ahead and cut off this one inch from here so guys we're going to use the back now to compensate for this one inch that we have cut out so don't worry yourself we're going to be doing it together when we cut the back 
so guys for the back pattern i've already draft out the basic lines so i left about two inches above the shoulder line here before marking the shoulder line then i took my measurement from the shoulder line to the bust point then to the waistline and then the length of the top and as you can see i had to join it to be able to get that full length for the back now for the neck from the center of the pattern paper here i'm going in by three inches for the neck width and then for the neck depth at the back i came down by one inch so i'm just going to go ahead and make a curve to connect this point this is the back neckline so the next thing is to divide your shoulder measurement by four i'll make a point here and then you're just going to go down by one inch to get your shoulder slope just like we did in front and i'm just going to slope it into the neckline and then just do the same thing i did in front come up from the um bust point to get my chest line so i'm just going to connect my armhole into it in a straight line so i'm following a straight line i didn't follow where my point is and then you draw a line towards the side so when you're through with that the next thing you're going to do is on this new line which is our chest line you will divide your bust measurement by four and you're going to mark it there and then you just use your armhole or curve or your free hand to just connect that new point into the armhole line so you can see that there's a difference between the way we connected our armhole here at the back and the way we did it in front so now just like we did in front you're just going to mark all your body measurements and add stitching allowance to it and then join the points together so guys now that we have drawn the back pattern i want you guys to pay serious attention to this part remember that on the front pattern i cut away one inch so that one inch is going to be replaced here at the back so i'm just going to come up from this point here by one inch and then come up here by one inch as well and I'm just going to connect everything with my ruler. So basically what this means is that the one inch we took away from the front, we're just basically going to give it to the back. So this is what we have done here. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is to just cut this out. So guys, this is basically all for the front and the back pattern. So by the time we stitch this together, this is how the back is going to cover up for the one inch that we took away from the front so this is basically all so for the side of this top i wanted to have like a, a kind of slant is of it just being a straight top so i just went in with a little bit of curve there and that is basically all for the drafting of this pattern so i'll go ahead and use this now to cut out on my actual fabric so guys i've gone ahead to cut out this is the back piece as you can see it's in a fold so the center part of the back is here and it i didn't cut out the center part of the back so it's in a fold as you can see so as while i was cutting it i added stitching allowance to the neck area to the shoulder here and to the side i didn't add to the side but i also added to the end it's shifting that's why it's looking like there's allowance on the side because i already added stitching allowance to the side when we were cutting this out so also for the front you're going to open your your paper when you're about to cut it out so also you add stitching allowance to the end there's no stitching allowance on this side guys this paper is just this fabric is very um, silky and it's shifting up and down so i added to the top area and to the end so there's no stitching allowance on the side so now the next thing i'm going to go ahead and do is open it up and this is the back pattern i'm placing the front pieces on it arranging it together like this the shoulder area so that i'll go ahead and stitch down the shoulders so guys after stitching down the shoulders this is what i had can you see how it's coming down to the front can you see how it came down to the front when you arrange the armhole properly you see that it comes down towards the front so this was the reason why we removed that one inch from the uh, front and replace it at the back so after doing this here after joining the shoulder the next thing you want to do is on this um area here for the button you're going to go in like this fold it a little bit by half of an inch and then you're going to fold it in again by one inch ensure that the space you have here is one inch and you're just going to go over to the sewing machine and just stitch this all the way to the end and you will do it for the both parts 
so guys after i was done with that this is how neatly it looked after i was done ironing it out so this is one part of it can you see the back and this is the other part as well this fabric i'm using is a little bit hard to work with so if you're a total beginner you're trying to make a button shirt i would actually advise that you make use of a print fabric and kara to be precise so um this is how far we've gone so the next thing we want to go ahead and do now is to measure around our neckline so that we'll be able to go ahead and cut out our collar so i'm taking the measurement around my neckline and after i was done i had about 19 inches and that 19 inches is what i'm going to go ahead and use to cut out my collar so guys for the collar i'm folding in this piece of paper right here and remember that 19 inches is the measurement around my collar so i'm just divided dividing that by two sorry and that gave me nine and a half so from the center of my fold i'm going to go ahead and mark that nine and a half as you can see and the next thing you go up from that point by half of an inch just like you see me doing like this and what you're going to do is to now divide this whole measurement here by two again so nine and a half divided by two so you're going to get the middle of this point here and now you're going to slant this into the middle so now the next thing we want to do is to determine the length of our collar stand and what i'm going to do is to go up from this point here by one inch can you see go up by one inch here just go up by one inch all the way around on this part you are going to be going up from the curve by one inch can you see go up by one inch one inch and you're going to use your ruler to just connect all the curves next thing you're going to do is from this curve here you're going to come in by half of an inch make a point there and just curve it into the neckline so when you're through with that you're basically done with this collar stand we're just going to go ahead and cut it out so now it's time to cut out the collar itself so um the next thing we're going to do is to just draw a straight line across first for our collar and then the next thing you're going to do is to mark that same nine and a half inch here just like we did on the collar stand and then to determine how long you want your collar to be for this i'm using two and a half inches so you're going to go up by two and a half inch and you're just going to make a straight line across connecting the points so guys another thing you want to do is from this point here i'm just going to come in by one inch and then connect it into the top of the other side slanted like this so when you're through with that you come up here by half of an inch and then just slope it into the neckline so this is our collar this is basically all for our collar the next thing i'll go ahead and do now is to just cut this out so now guys this is the collar and the collar stand this is a simple way to cut your collar and collar stand so the next thing i want to go ahead and do now is to use this to cut out on my stay so this is the stay i'm going to be using for this collar this is a simple gum stay so i'm just placing this on my collar as you can see pattern and i'm cutting it exactly as it is without adding any stitching allowance to this for now we will only be adding stitching allowance when we are cutting on our actual fabric so i'm done cutting out the collar and this stand here this is the stand let me just write it down here stand so next thing i'm going to use this now to cut out on my actual fabric so to do that as you can see i've opened up a piece of uh, my fabric and i'm placing my gum stay i'm actually actually placing the visible part of it that i can iron to the fabric towards the fabric like you see me doing like this so just place it like this and i'm also arranging the other part as well i'm going to go ahead and iron these out and when i was through ironing it on the piece of um, fabric i went ahead to now cut it out with half an inch stitching allowance all the way around and then i use that pattern I, I i got to cut out another piece to serve as lining and then i did the same thing for the collar as well cut it out with half an inch stitching allowance and after that use it to cut out another piece as well so this is our collar and our collar stand so the next thing we want to go ahead and do now is to start stitching down our collar so i'll go ahead and stitch it very close to the gum stay all the way around 
So after I was through with the first one, this is what it looked like. I've gone ahead to turn it over to the right side and iron it out. So now we're going to attach it to the collar stand. And how we're going to do that is we're going to get the middle of the collar itself and also get the middle of the collar stand as well. So guys, notice that on the collar stand, I made a notch on the part that is curved. So when you have made that notch to get the middle of the collar stand, you're just going to place the collar on it like this and use the other collar stand to cover it. So you're just going to pin everything down so that it doesn't move away. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is to stitch it around the curve, just like you see my hand demonstrating like this. So guys, after I was done with that, I went ahead to turn it to the right side and ironed it out. So this is what our collar looks like. Can you see how neat it looks? Very neat. So now, by the time we attach it to the uh, top itself, it's going to sit very pretty like this. It's looking really nice. So now the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is ensure that it's the part that doesn't have the gum stay that you are that is going to be facing you when you are joining this to the actual fabric so i'm getting the middle of my neckline i just made a notch on the top to get the middle of the neckline and also i'll get the middle here of the collar as well just notch the middle of the collar and i'm just going to go ahead and stitch this towards the actual fabric so just make sure you're looking at what i'm doing here so place it like this like this just like you see me doing like this this is the first one you're going to go ahead and do ensure that the notches are right in place pin it down to be sure that it's actually secured and you're just going to go over to the sewing machine and just stitch down this part all the way around first so guys after i was done stitching down the first part can you see how it looks like so now we're going to cover the rough edges with the other part of the collar so you just fold the other part of the collar like this and you're just going to fold it like this to cover the stitching on the other end and we're just going to go over to the sewing machine and we're going to make a top stitch all the way to the end so guys this is how nicely my collar came out looking really nice can you see how it looks by the time i cover it in and pin it down you can see how nicely our collar is sitting so now that we're through with the collar the next thing we want to go ahead and do is to work on the sleeve and then finish up this top so i'm going to go ahead and cut out my sleeve and then finish this up so i didn't share the parts where i was cutting out the sleeve because this tutorial is already very long but i promise you guys the sleeve tutorial is going to be our next video so now to fix the sleeve can you see how i'm arranging the armhole that line on the armhole is not going to be the center of the armhole you're going to mark the point where the center is by the time you have arranged your armhole to get the middle so now you place the top of your sleeve cap on the middle of your armhole here like this and you're just going to pin it down and when you're done pinning it down you're just going to go ahead and stitch it on the armhole so guys after i was done stitching down the armhole this is what it looks like so like i told you guys before this fabric is very hard to work with if you're a beginner please work with ankara or any other strong strong fabric that will not give you a tough time so this was really hard to work with but anyways it came out really nice and that is the beauty of it so after i was done with this after stitching it down the next thing i want to go ahead and do now is to just stitch down the sides remember that i gave this one inch stitching allowance so i'm just going to go ahead and stitch this down um by half of an inch because i want the extra half inch to be like my uh, ease i want it to be able to be free on my body so i'll do the same thing for the other side as well and when i'm through with that i'm going to go ahead and fold up the sleeve like this and then hem the end of the top and that'll basically be all for this tutorial so guys after i was done stitching everything around stitching down the side with half of an inch because i wanted it to have some level of ease um i also did the same thing for the other side i went ahead to hem the ends of the top and then went ahead to finish up the ends of the sleeve and this is what i have guys looking really nice and simple so the only thing that is left now is for me to get my button holes and then fix my buttons so you're going to fix your button holes 
on the right part of your shirt on the right so that you fix your buttons on the left so i'm going to fix my buttons here i'm going to be leaving about five inch distance by the time i'm placing this on my top and when i'm done with that that will basically be all for this shirt so guys this is the final look of my top after i was done making it and you can see how nicely it looks on me i absolutely loved how it came out so thank you so much for watching this i hope you find it helpful and i hope you try it out sometime very soon and i will see you guys in my next video bye